It should be easy to say something about Warhol, shouldn't it? After all, he himself said that if you want to know about Andy Warhol, just look at the surface. That's all there is. But as soon as you even attempt to describe something by him, you find yourself getting lost in a hall of mirrors. Take his orange disaster electric chair. He found a newspaper photograph taken in a death chamber, then silkscreened it onto a canvas multiple times. As soon as I think about what I'm seeing, I realise that what I am looking at are all the associations that the painting brings along with it. There is the blank stare of the artist, the knowledge that he reproduced the same image many more times, in singles, multiples, and different colours, so that any taint of horror gets rinsed out, like a pair of jeans washed dozens of times. The picture also displays the fun that Warhol was having at the expense of his fellow pop artists, the idea that any element of mass culture was food for art. When I think of how Warhol made this painting, using the silkscreen technique that he employed throughout his life, I'm aware of how this minimal involvement in the making of the work has been perfected by contemporary artists who employ a factory of artisans to turn their designs into objects. If I try to confine myself to the fact that I think there is a kind of visual beauty about Warhol's choices, for he still made some artistic decisions even if he professed otherwise, I am immediately aware that every picture, sculpture, film, happening, photo and interview he ever did was intended to be more or less interchangeable with every other. For Warhol, aesthetics, objective ideas of the worth or meaning of art, were meaningless and determined only by context and commerce. All of this makes it difficult to get a firm grasp on what it is about Warhol that compels me. And yet, I remain convinced that he was the most significant artist of the 20th century who wasn't called Pablo Picasso.